Okay, here we go. Holy cow, we're here. <laughs> it's real. We're live. Hello, 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 everyone. Hello. Hey. Hi. Um, so, Melissa has volunteered as tribute because she's the best. <laughs> um, we're going to just go through a couple of things real quick. How is everyone? Hello. Hello, Piano Man Adam. <laughs> This was hilarious. Adam jumped in the stream the other night when I was like streaming my campaign on Monday. And Kurt's like, hey, do I know any of these folks? I'm like, yeah, you know Pia. Yeah. And Adam's like, uh, yeah. it's me. It's Adam. <laughs> <laughs> was so good. Todd, what up? Jess, hello. Cool. Awesome. Sweet. So you've volunteered, Melissa. You've taken Tala. Petricor. You have leveled her back down to first level, and now we are going to uh, level her up again to second. Yep. So that's yep. super exciting. So She's we'll going to become right slightly in. less good. <laughs> yes, really. Um, second level is fun. Third level is the big one. That's where I think everybody's going to feel really like strong and awesome and tough. Like third level is when you pick your monk subclass, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm excited. Do you know where you're going? Uh, I'm thinking way of four elements. Going to get some of those mm. spell abilities. So yeah, I think that'll be cool. Yeah, they're fun. You get a bunch of cool little magic to play with. Um, cool. So let's just jump right yeah. into it. Um, so if you like look at the copy of Tala Petricor, you have these like buttons in the kind of top right of your sheet, just underneath the box with all the information, monk, wild hunt shifter. Um, but there's core bio spells and then the gear button, which is like the scary one that I tell everybody not to <laughs> click on a lot, but go ahead and click okay. on that. Well, let's like open that up. And if you scroll down a little bit in the, in the bottom right columns, you'll see, um, launch level plus character mancer. Yeah. So, yeah, you want to click the second one of those two, level plus character mancer, right? And it's going to bring you right into the character mancer level up. Um, so from here, you could just click next into the next box, and it's going to ask us, okay, what are we doing with levels, right? Uh, monk, you're level one. We're going to add one level equals level two. That seems about right. Yeah, yeah that takes it. <laughs> we... We, you had already rolled your hit points. Do you remember what you had in total? You had 14, I yeah. think, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that means that you rolled a four. Or sorry, I, I had 15. 15 is my new max. I rolled, yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, so that means you rolled a yeah. five. Um, so just make sure that's set to five, right? Uh, and it shows us a couple of things, like right underneath there, class features, right? Um, flurry of blows, key, patient defense, step of the wind, unarmored movement, right? This is all like the cool stuff you're going to get at second level. Yeah. So um, it's automatically, the character mancer is automatically going to add all this stuff, right? Um, I, like I talked about it a little bit last time, but... It's got most of the base stuff out of the player's handbook kind of built into it. I've unlocked like a bunch of the other books. I bought Xanathars and all this kind of stuff. So for people out there that are taking like weirder, more esoteric subclasses, it's not going to have as much functionality in this game for them. But if you have stuff straight from the player's handbook, that's cool. Uh, it, we can just click right through it. So from here, we're just going to go to next again. Yeah, I was trying to add in my, my homebrew uh, Janassi Sorcerer and not having all these other books bought already. I was trying to manually add them all in. It's a lot It's a lot more of a pain if you don't have Rich doing all the work for you behind the scenes of having all the books already. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, it can be. So, like, I've been using Roll20 for, like, three and a half years-ish now, and I definitely only unlocked the books a couple of months ago. Like, I bought them recently because I was finally, like, if I have to copy Chromatic Orb into a character sheet again i'm gonna throw myself out the window yeah. like my house is not that high so i'd probably be fine but i still don't need to break any of my windows you know <laughs> um so you can like click next right through this okay. right and now it's like bringing us to a screen where it's just going to explain all this second level stuff right isn't it's there for you flurry of blows key patient defense step of the wind on armor movement yeah right awesome excited to cool start using some key points and 
doing some cool monk stuff. Oh yeah, we're actually like um, bending time or something right now because actually our, isn't Tala technically involved in a battle? Yeah, <laughs> as we speak, yeah. as a second level monk fighting desperately for her life. Yeah, she may have um, already taken out a half ogre, uh, almost by herself using this uh, flurry of blows after a, a short sword hit. So yeah, yes, you know, some shout out to badass. some other characters that that did some preliminary damage, but she kind of. Yeah, sure yeah. they did. Whatever. <laughs> we know Tala is actually the legend. I, I like ran that first adventure, and Tala like was slaying Zarts like she, it was her job. Um, so we could like talk about what all this stuff does, but this isn't necessarily like the monk deep dive, right? The idea here is like you get these key points, you can spend them to use these final three abilities: patient, defense, step of the wind. Um, but all of this stuff is going to like preload in like the bottom right corner of your sheet all those like features and abilities. So from here, click next. Right. Um, now it just goes over the stuff that's added in. It's asking us about stats. Cause like, this is where we would add an ability score increase if you were getting to fourth level, but you're not. So no big deal. And that is it. You can go ahead and click apply changes. Okay. Boom. That's it. That's it. You guys, it's done. Um, and we went like extraordinarily slow <laughs> through all of that. <laughs> right. But the idea here is now on uh, the bottom right of your features and traits, all this stuff has been added. Right. Um, and just like I kind of was showing you guys last time, like this whole column of features and traits, you can literally like mouse over the bubble and it'll put this information right into the chat for us. Right. Um, and then if we click right underneath the name, the header, they'll all collapse. Um, so I'm just mucking with your sheet so we could like show them all this new stuff. Right. But that's it. It's all there. Boom, boom, boom. On armored movement, your move speed went up 10. We could see that like it automatically did that hit points maxed out 15. Very cool. Um, and that's really it. Um, so like one thing I guess I noticed, Melissa, while I was like looking at this sheet is that in the middle you have your attacks and spell casting and your darts aren't on there. Okay. Right. Yeah. So this is like a great moment too. Yeah. If you want, you can like open up that compendium, yeah. the little eye with the circle around it over on the right, and then go like right into items. <laughs> And we can drag darts from over here on your sheet, and that should auto load. Perfect. I am scrolling very slowly again. Yeah, this. I'm gonna let you do it. Okay. Did you, or do you want me to? Uh, do it? No, I thought you were doing it because then people could see it on the stream. But I can. Sure. Yeah. I'll go sure. for it. it. I just, I think it would have auto updated. But, oh, okay. So that's it. Like I just grab darts from over here. I drag them over. Boom. And they not only add like to your inventory at the bottom, which technically you have 10. So I'll change that 10. Um, into boom darts right here in your attacks. And we can like auto click. They load, they throw. It's very cool. Perfect. That's yeah. it. It's super straightforward. You I guys. did lose one in the um, wood recently. So I'm going to have to bump that down to nine later. But okay. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy um troy's making you work to recover those dark <laughs> arts out there in the forest yeah, i think his hands are tied cool. when i roll i think i rolled miserably for my perception check so that's fantastic um i love that you guys are like out there battling with like half ogres and wargs and the whole thing right now that's pretty good i guess like do you have any questions here melissa like as i got you and we're like sitting here looking at your sheet is there anything we can like go over um, I actually, something I've kind of wondered about, how much are you concerned about weight and how that might impact movement specifically for our this is, stuff? This is a great question. Um, like I was talking to Will about this yesterday, right? With, um, with his minotaur, Zaren. And I like gave him a shield and was like, oh, this shield is cool. They killed their boule on the adventure with Chad. They went and saved uh, the hamlet of Yorick and weird got elected the mayor, mm -hmm. but they came back with this boule hide and they like brought it to the blacksmith Boutro and were like, hey, can, can you make us armor? So Boutro made him this shield and was gave it to him like, hey, it's only half the weight of a normal shield. It's three pound instead of six. And he's like, oh, should I track that? How do I track that? We're not like going fast and hard with weight. 
right? Like every, anything that's within reason is reasonable. Um, if you're a gnome with an eight strength and we look at your character sheet and you're like, yeah, I'm carrying six long swords right. and a suit of chain mail that I took off that guy and 6,000 copper pieces. Like we may like time out, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're like, will and like a lot of the folks, minotaurs, uh, like Arnold's Warforged, they have an ability called like powerful build. So technically like their carrying capacity is doubled mm -hmm. to like cool. represent kind of how gigantic and easy it is for them to move stuff but we're not really playing with encumbrance encumbrance is technically the rule that um we use to like track your weight and then we can look at a table and say like oh you're slightly encumbered you're gonna lose five feet of movement speed like i've done that kind of D, &D. for some folks like it's really rewarding you know when you want to like grind down and do that super realistic like you know let's like really like look at this as though like it's very very real but we're playing with like a little bit of like a cinematic reality and like it's not that big a deal i don't think you mm -hmm. know if we're not like video game characters so like don't put the dms in a position where we have to care about it <laughs> and we won't care I think. right nobody gets nine long swords and yeah that'll be fine yeah except arnold because apparently he's a magnet I didn't think that through all the way. <laughs> they just attach <laughs> to all of his limbs as he walks along. He's like a porcupine. Basically. Yeah, basically. Um, so, yeah, that's it, you guys. Like, that's pretty much it. I don't know if anybody has any other questions. Is there anything else, Melissa, that you're, like, thinking about? The big thing I was thinking about is, you know, other than these darts, Tella doesn't really have a ranged attack. Um, mm -hmm. And I recently learned the darts only go 20 feet, not 60 feet without disadvantage mm -hmm. so that was a that was a thing mm -hmm. i had to learn mm -hmm. so if yep she wanted to go and get a short bow as well like can i just you know pay for it add it in like how are we what's the thought on yes. carrying more than one kind of main weapon like that yeah this is all like great stuff and it ties back to like the first one right like so um definitely like you throwing a short bow over your shoulder like grabbing a quiver of arrows like it's easy enough that's not gonna that's not a big deal and as far as like how we're approaching things in the discord like if you want to go into the play by post town and say like okay tala like walks over to butro's blacksmith uh breastplates and blades and buys a short bow and you just look in the player's handbook and are like oh it's 25 gold or whatever it is and you're willing to like pay that up front then you could just put it right in the play by post like tala drops 25 gold buys a short bow tag a dm if you want you don't have to but um yeah great yeah that was the big thing that i was thinking about is like oh what's the process now that i you know i, I chose the short sword at the beginning and, and maybe regretting yes. that decision slightly as i keep putting her in harm's way but at the same time she's a monk so she needs to be close enough to kind of utilize that unarmed strike at the same time so yeah, I think that's exactly on point. Like, you know, it's good to have something that does a little more than your unarmed strike now. Your unarmed strike damage will go up, but um, short sword, great call at the beginning. Hey, Brenna's are all dice. Brenna's got a good question. Um, she's asking, like, since she can choose cleric spells as part of her divine origin, but that's not a choice in the player's handbook, can I just manually add them from the right? Yes. Um, yes, Brenna. So, like, when you go into the character mancer, it might not know that you're allowed to, like, take those cleric spells, so it won't give you the option to put them in there. But just ignore it. Leave, like, the spell slot on, or the spell itself blank in the character mancer. And after you're done and, like, apply changes, you can drag it right out from uh, the compendium when you're done. Um, but that's like a great point. Let's do a spellcaster real quick. So I have my character, Andromedes Vesk, uh, the edgelord bashful elf here. She has not leveled up, but we'll level her up because who cares? I'm in charge. I can do that, right? Um, I'm just kidding. We'll take her back down. So basically the same exact thing we're seeing, right? Yep. Average. Now wizards choose their like subclass at second level so it's asking me arcane tradition which one do i want this is the only thing i'm getting at second level is this arcane um school now the one that i'm taking is not in here which is kind of great i, I will have to add it in manually um which i won't do now but let's just say she was going to be an illusionist so i can select like school of illusion right here forward cool 
this shows you the stuff you get for being an illusionist. Illusionists are pretty dope, you guys. They're fun. Uh, improved minor illusion, illusion savant. Great. Cool. That'll add in automatically. Now it's going to bring me to this thing. This is kind of what Brent is talking about. If you're a spellcaster and you go through this process, no, no, taking that, Troy, what do you said? Gotcha, Troy. Um, if you're a spellcaster, when you go through the character master, it's going to like bring you to this list. Um, and so it's asking, like, okay, I get to select two new spells. Which ones do I want? Well, I'll tell you one thing I want. I want Catapult because I've seen Orville throwing stuff around all over the place that it's awesome. And then I want uh, Expeditious Retreat so I can run away from the next creature that looks like me that tries to kill me. Right? And that is it. Same deal. I'm just going to click through, apply changes, and now it will have loaded in my new illusionist stuff. And if we go check out the spells page, bam, it's added my two new spells, Expeditious Retreat and Catapult. That's it. So it's pretty straightforward, right? Um, for some of you guys, like I'm saying, like if you have a little bit more unusual characters in terms of not just player's handbook stuff, then we can manually enter all this stuff, and that's not that hard either. Um, there's a lot of places online that you could just find all this stuff written out, and we can copy-paste it. You're certainly more than willing to type it all in manually. If um, you open your character sheet on this front page, and we go down to this features and traits area, all the boxes have it. The little arrow in like, the bottom left, boom. We just add a new box, right? And I could type, like, oh, uh, Blade Singer. I sing with blades. Boom. Right, and I click the gear button over here on the right, and it closes. And now I've got that loaded out. It's pretty straightforward. Um, if any of you guys out there have questions, just dump them in the chat, and like I'll go through them. But I guess this is the last thing I was going to do today is just show you how to go through this from scratch. Now, you can't select your own character sheets i have to give them to you because i'm like the creator of the game but if you're going to make a new character or you want to do it yourself just tell me i can come in here create a character sheet and assign it to whoever it is that's getting it right um melissa just in case uh tala petricor gets killed tonight here's your new character oh, no. sheet <laughs> <laughs> um, Will has a question right. before you move on about how to add his yes. shield to his character sheet. Oh, great. So check it out, Will. What you could do is open your sheet on here so that the sheet is like literally right here in front of you like ours are. Um, right? And then on the right side of the screen, above the chat, click the little eye with the circle around it. Again, that's this compendium. It's really useful, right? And you could do a couple of things here, but you could just legit type shield up in the top search bar, and it will bring up a bunch of stuff. Here's the spells. Nope, you're not getting magic items. Nope, you're not getting all these magic shields, but you're getting a regular shield. So just grab it, drag it onto your sheet, boom, it's going to load up. And it's automatically going to add plus two to your armor class. I don't know if you guys saw that pop up from 13 to 15. And then what you would do, Will, like to modify that it's this cool boule hide shield, just go right on here and add boule shield. And you can change the weight to three pounds, and it'll retabulate all of that if that works. Uh, Luke, very specifically an Orville related question. Am I able to get access to a token for his hom homunculus servant or is it one token per player? So what I'll do is, um, I can just drop a token on the map. I will build a character sheet that just says homunculus and I'll just give you control of that character sheet. And then when you come in to play, you'll be able to move both of them around independently. Um, you can only assign one token to each sheet, but like, I could just create the token and let you move it, but if I attach it to a character sheet, then it's easy for you to, like, drag it onto the map when you need it. Um, and I think we'll do, like, a couple more of these while I'll go in a little bit deeper, especially as we're all kind of moving up in levels and stuff like this, but... Do you guys want me to do one from scratch? 
Um, Jess has like sent me her new character, the forest gnome ranger. And I could sit here and go through this whole character creation thing from scratch. If anybody wants right now, let's do it. <laughs> says Brenna champion. I love that founders badge next badge next to your name. Brenna. That makes me happy. Um, Jess is excited. So we probably should just do it. Nice. Oh my god, my cats are making chaos back there. That's what cats are for. Um, yeah, I guess it kind of is. <laughs> so, this is a brand new character sheet. When I open it up, it gives me these three options. How do I, what do I want to do? Um, how do you want to create this character? Edit sheet directly. Those are like the good old days. I don't mess with that anymore, though it's really easy. It will just give us the whole sheet blank, and we'll manually go in and add all the data. Create an NPC. This is not an NPC. Uh, Jess is a player, which means it's going to be a player character. So let's go in and use the character mancer. So this is from scratch how we do it. Okay, start. Next. So, choose a race. She's a gnome. Gnome. Cool. Uh, alignment. We'll fill that out afterwards, but it automatically is going to load in all the basic gnome stuff, right? She's small size, movement speed, languages, common and gnomish. Uh, it's going to add those language proficiencies right in dark vision. Now, gnomes have sub races. There's a couple of different types of gnomes. She's going with forest gnome, right? Bing. So it knows forest gnomes get plus one dexterity. Forest gnomes get minor illusion. Forest gnomes can speak with small beasts, which is everyone's favorite thing to do in this game. Yeah. And that's it. Like, so now that I've got that selected, I will like next over here takes a minute to think it knows what it's going to do with these stats plus one plus two to intelligence now it's like okay what's the class ranger right this is where i got to start referencing jess's sheet that she sent me right but um okay so proficiencies, which skills did she take? Now I have to do a little bit of reverse engineering. Uh, so I know she's got the folk hero background, which I think is animal handling and survival are the skills she gets. Let's see how good I am at actually remembering all the stuff off the top of my head. So the three proficiencies she took for being a ranger are, I think, nature, perception, and stealth. Boom. All three of them right on top of each other. So I'm just going to select those. And if you notice, like, it only is going to give me access to the ones rangers are allowed to choose from, right? It makes it, like, really straightforward. Um, favored enemy. What did Lolly take for a favored enemy? I'm really curious. What's going on here? Uh-oh. None of that information's on this because I have it loaded in a window rather than in the actual PDF. Jess, do you remember what you did for this? She's thinking about uh, it. You didn't choose one. No problem. This is actually a great point. Don't worry about it. So we'll circle back around, and this is a good thing for us to choose. I didn't go over this yet. So this is me also going through, like, the character approval process. There's kind of a ton of options, Jess. Uh, the idea here is... It's showing us, but beginning at first level, you have significant experience studying, tracking, hunting, and even talking to a certain type of enemy. Um, and it gives us the whole breakdown here. Aberrations, beasts, celestials, constructs, dragons, elementals, fey, fiends, giants, monstrosities, oozes, plants, or undead. That's a lot of options. Most of those probably don't make sense to a lot of people. These are the big, like classifications that monsters fall inside of right um so like no pressure to figure all this stuff out now we can circle back on this later and do it um it's a, it's a fun it like in... character background moment though you know having played a ranger myself in the past it's okay who might they have encountered a lot of so mine had been a ranger who had fought in the big war against the goblins so goblins were the yes. favorite enemy and so she you know had spent a lot of time fighting goblins and knew a lot about them from her back yeah so that's exactly it. it and um it ties back perfectly because like jess had chosen for her background here for lolly folk hero and i know as she and i were just talking a little while ago she's like i haven't quite like fleshed out what that story is like why she became a folk hero she said like i think maybe she like saved her clan 
right? Um, so that's a thing. At Let's go Giants, she yeah. says. Okay, cool. Giants are very straightforward, mm. right? And this is an important, like, Ranger-related note. But by picking Giants, like, that's not a thing you're going to fight at first level, mm-hmm. right? But later... You're going to be awesome at dealing with giants. Giants are like very common as we come up into the kind of middle stages of D&D. Common and <laughs> scary the first time you encounter a giant is, a, you know, oh, still feeling yeah. very squishy, even if you're not quite level one squishy. No. Um, giants are scary, you guys. <laughs> they wear armor and have weapons like they're and they're giant and really strong. <laughs> it is very David versus Goliath jazz. I got to love it. Um, so technically it's cool. Troy's here, but he's doing his play by post adventure, like ogres. You guys killed an ogre yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. Boom. Giant. That's a giant right there. Technically it's kind of the least of the giants. So the idea here is you also get a free language, uh, because of your favorite enemy. This is pretty straightforward giant, right? Um, the idea that you could kind of like listen in uh, and and understand what your enemy has to say is like really important and powerful. We've all learned this in like just the last month of playing, right? Um, so the last thing you select for a ranger at first level, natural explorer. Uh, you get to pick one type of environment from Arctic, coastal, desert, forest, grassland, mountain, swamp, or the underdark which are the caves underground. I think probably forest fits here, Jess, right? Oh, my cats are really going crazy now. Um, forest, for sure, yes. So the idea here is when you're traveling and your favorite terrain, difficult terrain doesn't slow you, you can find food, you're really good at moving stealthily, uh, and while tracking other creatures in forests... You learn their exact number, their sizes, and how long ago they passed through the area. This is really cool, right? Um, you could take a look at these tracks and like lock it right down. Cool. So we go to next ability score method. We're all using the standard array. So if we choose standard array, it gives us like this crazy grid, which can be a little overwhelming, but it's pretty straightforward. We're just kind of going to click through and select the right uh, option for like each one of these stats. Now. I'm going to look at Lolly's stats. Okay, cool. So strength, it looks like she took a 10. For dexterity, she has a 15, but I know she gets plus one for being a gnome, so that's her 14, right? I think? Oh, no, they're not modified yet. Even better. So dexterity, 15. Constitution, 13. Intelligence, 12. Uh, wisdom, 14. And the charisma is going to be an 8. We have a lot of eight charisma characters <laughs> we in this do. game. I love it. A lot of us are not I people love people. It. No. Andromedy's mask is definitely not a people people. <laughs> the conversation that we um, role played between Tala and Andromedy is just the two of them like cautiously looking at each other, like not wanting to have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was so fun. I love role playing awkward. Like I really yeah. do. <laughs> it's so easy for me to channel into or whatever. Yeah. And then um, uh, Ashen stumbles drunkenly out of the bar and suddenly there's a thing to think about. So they're both like, oh, thank goodness. We don't have to talk to each other. It's fine. I was so relieved that you followed Ashen home. So I didn't have to <laughs> tell a like good citizen, good citizen. So this is cool. Jess, your stats are going to be even higher than you thought they were. Cause we didn't add any of your no modifiers yet. Right. So technically I think your dex is going to go up to a 16 and your intelligence is going to go up to a 14. If you want to change this after the fact, we can, we can go back to all this. But anyway, I selected the stats. Cool. Now background. This is one that's going to be tricky for you guys again, cause I have the player's handbook. I have all these players handbook options right in front of me. So it's really simple for me to pick folk hero and look how good I am. Animal handling and survival. Those are correct. I have, uh, spent way too much time memorizing all this stuff. Hey, you're proficient in land vehicles. That's really useful. <laughs> yeah, <it turns laughs> out our other forest gnome was using that the other day. So it works out for real. Um, it was very useful, actually, that Rascal knew how to drive that cart. So you get proficiency in land vehicles, and then you're going to have artisan's tools. It, artisan's tools is this really broad category, but what's cool about this is, like, it shows us all the artisan's tools. Alchemist supplies, brewer supplies, maybe, you know, calligraphy, carpentry, pottery, uh, mason's tools, whatever. We'll just pick wood carvers for now. We can change it later. Now... 
these are all little things that are your personality traits. These are all tied to your background. If we looked at Folk Hero and the Player's Handbook, it kind of goes into a little more depth about what was the defining event, right? These are all the examples right from there. I'm going to leave them blank. They can be filled out manually. No big deal. So next, how do we want to choose our equipment? Uh, let's go with class equipment. It's going to ask all these basic questions. You want to start with leather armor, not scale mail. Your tiny gnome with a high dex. Uh, two short swords and any simple weapon. Uh, yeah, we're going to go with the short sword. We're going to take a club. I'm picking random things now, Jess. I'll fix it all later. And then Dungeoneer's Pack or Explorer's Pack. Explorer's Pack, a set of artisan's tools, brewer's supplies. Lolly uh, makes that good gnomish grog out there in the, in the uh, elven tree. It knows that you're going to start with Minor Illusion because you're a forest gnome, right? Feats. Uh, this is really a funny thing to me. You haven't really done that much yet, it says. You yeah. don't have a feat. <laughs> I saw that this morning. I was like, you haven't done anything. It's you don't so have any special skills. Yeah. The character sheet is like actually shading you. Like, oh, first level? Pfft. Come back. Come back <laughs> when you're fourth, right? <laughs> um, and then all this good stuff. Age, height, weight, eyes, hair, skin, cool. Can fill all that out. Boom. Um, we haven't. Ch it shows us here the stuff we haven't done yet. You haven't chosen your alignment. We haven't picked all our personality traits and stuff. But we got the hard work done. So we tell it to apply changes. It builds the character. Blam. And as you can see, this thing is already pretty populated. And it's a beautiful thing that all this stuff, the features are here and built in. And we didn't have to put them in manually, right? So that's it, you guys. That's the like basics of walking through building a character with the character mancer. Um, yep. Does anybody else have any questions out there while we're hanging out? Doesn't look like it. How about you, Melissa? Do you have any more questions? No, you answered my couple. I'm sure I'll have more as we go. But that's... Yeah. It's a little more, works. and then I'll have an excuse to do this again next week. Um, cool. Thank you very much for like taking some time and jumping on here and like going through all this with me. Uh, I feel like particularly less awkward not being by myself. So aces. Perfect. Yeah. Anytime. <laughs> it's fun. Um, and yeah, that's it, you guys. That's like the basics of like managing a character sheet, right? Like going through it. We did like creation. We leveled up a wizard. We leveled up a monk. Like that's really it. Uh, I think so far we're getting a lot of like good feedback around Roll20. People seem to dig having this here. Um, I know like we sent, there's all those other character sheets in the Discord. They're really useful. If you're the kind of person that likes a paper copy, print your paper copy. The biggest trouble I find with these sheets in Roll20 is like there's no easy way to just print them. You know, I wish that I could like I, I'm sure somebody who's a little more savvy than me could like figure out how to do it really easily. Right. Um, but for the sake of like the DMs and, and all of us being able to come in here and open up any one of these sheets and kind of get into what's going on on it and level them up and check your items and and look at exactly what you have to kind of help explain how it works or just to track it or, or all of that kind of stuff that we have to do on the back end. It's really useful for us to have them here. So for anybody who is like using a digital sheet and is like updating their PDFs and then saving it again and updating it and saving it again, I really encourage you to just like transition in here. Use this sheet in the Roll20 as like your primary sheet and um, it makes life easy, you know. And I, I showed it last time, but, like, we did play this week. Like, again, all this stuff on the sheet is hyperlinked. All the roles, if somebody says, make an intelligence check, we can just click on intelligence, and it knows what's going on. It rolls it for us. And we, you can always, like, mouse over the numbers down here, and it'll show you. Roll to six plus one is seven, right? Um, athletics, same with the weapons. This is worth me showing you. When you make weapon attacks in roll 20... Okay, cool. 21 and 21. You just stab the guy with your short sword and your silver dagger. But, like, how do we do the damage? This is a little unintuitive, but we have to go over into the chat underneath the actual numbers in the chat, and short sword right there will be, like, hyperlinked again. And if we click that, it will roll our damage. 
Um, this is, goes with like any kind of attack, whether it's a spell, anything where you're making an attack roll, it loads into the chat and you get the damage out of it down there in the chat. You're wasting all my good rolls, but yeah, it's good. <laughs> I know. It's horrible, right? Um, the rolls are dangerous. We played the other night on Monday and my players, Kurt, actually, Clark, crit three times in a row. <laughs> in short side. He was just like, 20, 20, 20. And I, I was like shocked, man. They were in a really dangerous fight. Uh, Kurt's character, Angus Brighthorn, was surrounded and he obliterated them. But meanwhile, two weeks before that, like I attacked them with a pretty simple couple of enemies and I crit three oh, times yeah. in a row, like 20, 20, 20. So take the roll 20 algorithm as you may. Like, I know you kind of hate it. Well, I right. it have not been deep good anger against the Roll20 bot because I'm convinced that it is out to get me. Um, yeah. I, yep. But also DiceBot on the Discord. I, I, in one night, oh, I, I used DiceBot, Roll20, and D&D Beyond, and Physical Dice. Uh -huh. I was just like, nothing likes me. I'm having no luck. I think I rolled <laughs> four nines in a row across three different ways of rolling dice. So. That's brutal. Yeah. That's brutal. Um, as like my one player in the campaign, my friend Taylor is wanting to say like, I don't know, some planets in retrograde or something. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like sometimes the dice like break like badly. And, and I don't know, I'm, I've been doing this a long time. Like I like to roll in front of the players. It like absolves me of responsibility, you know, like I'm the player's like biggest fan. Yeah. I want you guys to like be badass and do awesome stuff. And like, and like, I want it to be challenging. So you feel validated when you like overcome the challenges, right? It like feels so much more empowering to know, like that was really dangerous, but like we did it, you know, but sometimes the dice like, decide that they're going to tell the story tonight and it doesn't matter who wants what like they're going to go their own way you know so it's it's always blows me away yeah there need to be there need to be stakes otherwise half the fun of the game is is gone like we might as well play something entirely different that has no stakes mm -hmm. involved uh but i mentioned it the other day i think it's dm and players against the dice is like it's not dm against mm -hmm. players like dms aren't trying to to kill everybody it's just you know sometimes those dice are nope. tiny little mother effers and you know it's yeah it's true yeah and that's like a really good point like i i don't know when when i was young and we used to play it was very adversarial it was like i played with a dm who was great at what he did but also was very much like there to beat us mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, it's such a different experience than like how I approach stuff now, you know, like it's really not adversarial. Like I'm not like beating up your characters. You guys, the monsters are, I'm just here to like make sure the rules get played out correctly. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's yeah. it. Cool. Well, thank you again, Melissa. I really appreciate it. Thank you for like the hardcore recruitment effort. No um, you've been like deeply successful. Like the people are still like coming in every week. We had like three new characters this week, four new characters. Something this like week. that. Yeah. They um, all came in within a day and I was like, oh, you all have to meet each other. And, yep. and this is perfect. You've got your own little level one posse as yep. a bunch of us are moving up to yep. level two. Yep. The new folks. Um, I'm glad that was helpful, Jess. I'm going to go over to Lolly and make sure she's actually all dialed in. We'll talk about a couple of this stuff. But if nobody else out in uh, the peanut gallery has questions, I will say good night. Melissa, thank you again. And uh, yeah, we'll do this again as we have more questions. Mm -hmm. I've got to return to my but play by post adventure. So this is good. Yeah, you do. Good luck. Um, don't let them get away. That's all I'll say. <laughs> I'll do my best. It's not ominous at all. <laughs> bye guys thank you all for stopping by everybody have a good one bye everybody